We'll take a little break when we come back. We're going to meet another adopted mother who says she was never told about her son's illness. Now, let me tell you about this for a second. You go to a hospital, get a brand new baby. The hospital says you had a baby, it'll be yours. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you, I can get you this baby. The baby's coming to you. You wait a couple of months and the baby doesn't get released from the hospital. Oh, geez, well, maybe there's something wrong. No, there's nothing wrong. The baby will be with you. All of a sudden, you get the baby. From the day you get this baby, for 11 years, this baby goes in and out of the hospital for various problems. And it's not until the child is 11 years old that somebody says this baby's been HIV positive since birth. And the child could have had the medication he needed. We'll be back right after this. Justin was sick all the time on town. Um, strep throat, um, staph, conjunctivitis, lymph nodes like golf balls. And I continually went back and forth to my pediatrician. She would say, here, Melody, give him amoxicillin, seek galore, all this stuff. stuff. When I first went public, my friends totally rejected me, left me out in the cold. And I don't bother with those people anymore. Friends I have now are, like, really good to me, though. They accept me for who I am, for being Justin, not for being Justin living with HIV. Tell. Awarded the Nancy Susan Reynolds Award for programming which reached out to teenagers living with AIDS, now continues. Please welcome Melody to the show now, please. <laughs> Melody, let's back up. Tell us what happened when you adopted your son, Justin. Well, at first, um, it was an adoption. Mm -hmm. I had gone through uh, four miscarriages, mm -hmm. and my ex-husband and I decided our next bet would be to adopt this child. Okay. When we went down, we felt very happy because they told us that um, there was a baby that was going to be giving birth within a couple of months, and two children had been taken away from her previously for neglect, and if we passed the home study, the psychologicals, we would get the child. We were thrilled. Mm -hmm. It was my dream, because I always wanted to be a mom, and I went through eight surgeries and everything else, a lot of infertility specialists. Okay. What happens next is um, we get the phone call. Justin's born on March 6, 1983. And we're told that I ask when is the baby going to be sent home to me. And he said in a few days. You know, after a normal delivery, I think it was three days. It's okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Got the nursery ready and stuff like that. And at the end of the week, we get a phone call. And we're told that Justin wasn't coming home. And then I was like, why not? And he said he wasn't coming home because they were having difficulty with the biological mother and there were second thoughts and mm -hmm. all this other stuff. Okay. I felt that, oh no, another disappointment is going to happen to me. I, I, I lost, you know, four children through miscarriages and I'm going to lose another child. The next week, Montel, I got a phone call at the beginning of the week. And I again asked, is the baby coming home? And he told me no. Again, and I was like, what's going on here? And I was told, you are, it's really none of your business. You're just going to be a foster, a foster mother. And when, the, when and if Justin is going to be released from the hospital, we'll call you. Mm. Well, that went on for exactly 26 days. Finally, on March 31st of 1983, I got a phone call in the morning, and it was from the social workers, and they told me Justin was being released. Well, I can't tell you how happy it made me and my, my family, my ex-husband. Um, the social workers came to my home, placed Justin in my arms, and then they told me that my son may have been a drug withdrawal baby. Mm -hmm. And I looked up at them and I said, well, okay then. And they asked me, could I please undress Justin, give back the clothing that they sent him home in, mm -hmm. and then they'd be on their merry way. They told me that, you know, he was fine and healthy though, nothing to worry about. I accepted that. That evening, when the social workers, before they left, 
that evening they told us that we, my ex-husband and I, that we had to um, bring Justin to a pediatrician. And do you think this was odd? This is a baby who just left the hospital. Why has he got to go see a pediatrician? You know, I had my doubts, but I really didn't realize at the time. Mm -hmm. Sure. Things were going on, you mm -hmm. know. I, I thought this was just a procedural thing mm -hmm. to do. So we bring him to the doctor, and she tells me everything is fine. Okay. And I kept her, as a matter of fact, as a doctor for Justin's first 11 years of his life. Okay? Justin was sick all the time, I'm tell. Um, strep throat, conju um, staph, conjunctivitis, lymph nodes like golf balls, and I continually went back and forth to my pediatrician. She would say, here, Melody, give him amoxicillin, Cicolor, all this stuff. stuff. Let me take a break here. Would you tell us what happened when you come back? We'll be back right after this. Nine of those a day. Um, this is 3TC, two of those a day. This is AZT, uh, two of those a day. Beginning of school year, I had like food thrown at me in a cafeteria, and uh, some kid said to me, oh, you think you're cool because you got AIDS, like that. And uh, she also made a comment saying, you should get rubber gloves. My mom told me personally, but the doctors were there, and Sam was there. Let's go back to that moment for a minute. You're in a doctor's office, your mother walks in with a doctor, and looks you in the face and said, hands of our police. He said, one day you take him to the doctor, and the doctor said what to you? The doctor asked me in my ear, what did I know about the birth? And all I said was what I was told when they finally brought Justin to my home after the 26 days, was that Justin may have been a drug withdrawal baby. But they took another test. Well, then he asked me to sign for the HIV test. And I said, but why? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, quarter percent chance that your son may have HIV. And I said, he's 11 years old. How could that be possible? Right. And, uh, well, sure, sure, they took the test. And on April 14th, 1994, I got the phone call. And it wasn't too nice. No. We have a little tape here. We recently took cameras by to visit Justin. Take a look at this. When I first went public, my friend totally rejected me, left me out in the cold, and I don't bother with those people anymore. Friends I have now are, like, really good to me, though. They accept me for who I am, for being Justin, not for being Justin living with HIV. So I play video games a lot. Like, nobody I know can beat me, you know? There's always somebody that can, but I haven't met that person yet. He and a babysit. Yogurt. Yeah, his name is Patrick. And, you know, I feed him, I help out when he's... I don't change diapers. That's, that's one thing I don't do. So this is my room. It's pretty boring, but it's a room. Some of the things I'm into, like, heavily is Star Wars. Then, um, you know, I'm a really big Jets fan. Uh, I like to write. And I like to really just, like, you know, make a difference in the world. That's part of what my webpage is about. I can reach, you know, millions of people by just putting information on the web. I think this is an excellent letter to the president. I'm very proud of Justin. He's very special because he's brave and he's not afraid to go out there. Justin never complains. Never. Uh, this is where all my medicines are in. I take from anywhere from 25 to 30 pills a day. Nine of those a day. Um, this is 3TC, two of those a day. This is AZT, uh, two of those a day. Beginning of school year, I had like food thrown at me in a cafeteria, and uh, some kid said to me, oh, you think you're cool because you got AIDS, like that. And uh, she also made a comment saying, you should get rubber gloves. And he's just picked himself up, and he continues to live life. Now I'm a lot more philosophical about being infected. The only thing that's really changed for me is I have to be more responsible. I've got to realize that this is my life, and I have to take charge of it now. It was deceit. She should have told me the truth. If the mother who gave birth huh. was HIV positive, the child stood a chance of being HIV positive. Why didn't they test them? That's all questions. Well, that's a question I hope you and your attorney find out. But before we go any further, please welcome Justin to the show.
You know what? I have to take a little break, Justin. Let me take a break first, and I want to talk to you about what you've been through since you found this out. Okay. Take a break. We'll be back right after this. You, when you were six and seven, you knew you were getting sick all the time, did you not? Yes, Montel, and it was emotional for me, too, you know. Kindergarten, you know, f through fifth grade, you know, people ask me, so, Justin, why are you absent so much? And I'm like, I'm sick. That's the only answer I could give. And they strayed away from me, these kids. They're like, he's sick. We don't want to go near him. I for, couldn't give them an answer. For a little while, did you not also tell children that you had cancer or something? <laughs> yeah, when, after I found out I was positive, you know, I didn't want to tell anybody I was HIV positive. I mean, I've, I hang out with my friends, and, you know, they didn't know. And I'd be just sitting there watching TV with them, and they'd be like, point at some guy on TV, haha, he looks like he has AIDS. I'm sitting here with HIV, the virus that causes it, and these are my friends, you know? I mean, what are they gonna, how are they gonna react? When, the day you found out, 11 years old is adult enough to know, you knew. When, who told you? Did your mother tell you or did the doctor? Yeah, it was my mom, my doctor. My mom told me personally, but the doctors were there and family members were there. Let's, let's go, no. Let's go back to that moment for a minute. You're in a doctor's office, your mother walks in with a doctor and looks you in the face and said, what did she say to you? I said, I believe it was Justin, we know the name of your virus that you have. And she told me... She said those words, did you automatically know what it was going to be? No, okay. I didn't. I was like, no, okay, maybe I'm going to find out. And, you know, I could answer people finally. Mm -hmm. You know, it was HIV and I was like, I think I just stopped, like, the world stopped spinning for me in that moment. And knowing this, now looking back at it, if these people had known that you had HIV from the second you were born, and your mother had known that, there are drugs available even through your, when you were six or seven. Maybe not when you were one, but six or seven that could have saved you all this pain yes. along the way. We saved a lot of it because we know there are drugs available right now that knock this virus down to the point that people can have at least a reasonable life. You're still positive, but you can have a normal life. Yes. And now you've missed that opportunity. How's your T cell count right now? It's undetectable. It levels. is undetectable now. Yeah, my T cell count is. Well, please welcome Matthew to tone to the show. Matthew, stand up for me right where you are for a second, sir. Thank you. Matthew. And, all these in, and Justin's attorney, Matthew, I, I, I said to you upstairs, this is unconscionable to me. Is there any proof now that possibly this hospital, was, the mother had to be HIV positive? Uh, we learned through the records and through talking to the biological mother that she was actually diagnosed HIV positive within four to five months after Justin's adoption was finalized. I think one of the more horrifying aspects of this case is that clearly in uh, Justin's medical records and what the Foundling Hospital knew is that Justin was supposed to be followed in a high-risk clinic upon his release from the hospital. This is something that they never bothered to tell Melody. So what's horrifying is that you have an agency here at the expense of just getting another child adopted playing Russian roulette with this child's life. Right now we're uh, suing the Catholic Archdiocese, which oversees the Foundling Hospital, as well as the Foundling Hospital, as well as Dr. who was uh, Justin's pediatrician through the Foundling Hospital. And was a pediatrician for 11 years. 11 years. And, and had the medical records, Montel. And you can't tell me that a pediatrician could not have looked at some of the maladies that Justin had over an 11-year period of time and not thought, there's something going on more here than near infection. Well, uh, unless she was blind, deaf, and dumb, you're right, she couldn't. Okay, all right, thank you very much. So let me take a little break. When we come back, let's talk a little bit more to you, Justin, about, you know, I mean, I, I, you lost a lot of friends, yes. gained a lot of new friends. Yes. So at least that's moving in the right direction, right? Yes, it is. All right, when we come back, we also meet a woman who wrote a book about what every adoptive parent needs to know. These things don't have to happen. Now, I say that, and please, what I say is I'm saying is if you did something wrong, but if you're out there right this second thinking about adopting a child, I'm going to tell you, you need to pay very close attention to the show. And you need to demand that the organization that is going to provide you with this baby knows up front. You better tell me everything I'm gonna know, I need to know about this child before I walk out the door. Because if you don't, I'm going to make you sign that you said everything. And if you don't give me some information, I'm coming back to get you. You're going to have to help me deal with this. 
And I'm glad that, that at least you all have attorneys to help you work through this. And I hope that, I'm sorry, I take them to the cleaner if you can. We'll take a break. I'll be back right after. question for our guests. Yes, uh, for Justin's mother, A, I have to give her credit for having to stand all the pain of her son being uh, positive. And I have to give Justin also credit for having to live with it. And these two parents at the end, Absolutely. that's something terrible to have to live with and not to know it until the last minute and find it out yourselves. I give you all credit for that. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is for Justin's mother. When Justin had entered school, um, isn't it required for him to have a physical? And the, the pediatrician he had gone to initially as a baby, is that the same pediatrician who administered this physical? Yes. And, but a child has to have a physical to go to school. A child, you cannot, no school in America can require a child to have an HIV test. That is not part of the requirement to go to school. You need to understand this. You do not, a child does not have to have an HIV test to go to school. And you cannot make anybody go take an HIV test. Can't be done. Unless there's a specific reason or a specific job that uh, would, would require that. But I don't believe, would you guys know about this? I don't think any place could, no, no school can require you to have an HIV test. I haven't heard about the biological fathers. Are they both involved? With your children and with Justin? Well, no, once they're adopted, those parents are not allowed to be involved. What do you mean, were they involved before they got the kids? Yes. Okay. Were the, was the father involved with uh, your children, or did they even give you any information about that? Just that he was in and out Just of jail. Basic, yeah. In and out of jail. How about the father in this case? Justin's biological father was involved. And as a matter of fact, through the litigation, he has now contacted my attorney, and Justin has been, been united with siblings that he never knew. Lynn, so you wrote this book. I, I agree. The parents should take some extra responsibility. But I'm going to sit here and tell you that in 1999, if there's an adoption agency that is not willing to tell a parent that this child was born addicted to drugs, this child was born addicted to crack, cocaine, alcohol, this child was born this way or another, no, the child's fine. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that may have been had a little problem. You had one piece of that information. I am sorry. I think for the rest of that child's life, because as far as I'm concerned, Justin, this, the people who, who gave you up for adoption should be paying every one of your medical bills for the rest of your life. Every one of them. And, and I'm not talking about compensation for you. Your daughter should be taken care of for the rest of their lives and be treated at the finest hospital in the world because this is something that somebody did. It's a scam. Well, we are out of time, so I want to thank all of our guests for being here today. And I just want to say that this show was not about trying to convince you right now, if you're sitting at home, to not adopt. We're just trying to make sure you understand there are children out there across this country who need homes, and they need parents who can love just the same way these parents will love. But they need to have the right information. And, you know, Mr. Tatoni just told me, you know, though these agencies are required to give you this information, there is no hammer out there. Remember the hammer? <laughs> we can talk about what the rules say. But if they don't give it to you, it's like, oops, because nobody's beating them over the top of the head. I'm telling you, I think this should be the hammer right here. These two cases should be part of the hammer in America to make adoption agencies wake up and understand you need to tell parents the truth. And when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, you look on the stage and you see three parents right here, right now, who it doesn't matter what the adoption agency did to them. They still love their children. And they're going to love them until they die. So it's ridiculous. Justin, why don't you say something to those people out there who would have the nerve to say something or judge you because of the disease you have? I'm just like a normal person, just like you. And, you know, if you don't like it tough, you got to live with me. You know? I'm always going to be here. Not only that. You know, you have to live with Justin, but let me tell you something. This virus has not slowed down. Though in some groups across the country it's slowed down, but it's still there. It's pervasive. Within the next 10 years, Every family in America will be touched some way, shape, or form by this disease from a distant relative. We all ought to join together now and start supporting those people that need the help, like Justin and others. Start supporting those foundations that are looking for a cure, 
try to get this disease eradicated so we don't have to worry about this again and never have another mother be put in this position. Join us on the next Montel. Thank you. Since the show, Linda and Joe say the state of Arizona has issued a motion to dismiss their lawsuit against them. They are disappointed, but plan on pushing forward with their case. Since the show, Justin is thinking of starting a foundation servicing children and teens infected with HIV or the AIDS virus.